From radical activist to a woman who hired a contract killer out of extreme jealousy, here are 10 women who made the FBI's most wanted list. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to They Will Kill You. Hit the like button and request any topics you'd like to learn about in the comments section below. <laughs> Number 10. Donna Jean Wilmot Donna Jean Wilmot was part of the Weather Underground, a radical activist movement that used violence as a way of protesting sexism, racism, classism, and the Vietnam War. She and Claude Daniel Marx landed a double spot on the FBI's most wanted list after purchasing what they believed to be 37 pounds of explosives. Their plan was to blow up a maximum security prison in Kansas in an attempt to free Oscar Lopez, the leader of a Puerto Rican separatist organization. What they didn't know at the time was that their contact for the explosives was actually an FBI undercover agent. After discovering an FBI monitoring device in their car, Marx and Wilmot went underground along with their spouses. For years, they lived several blocks from each other in Pittsburgh under assumed identities. After a year of negotiations with federal authorities, they both surrendered in 1994. Number 9. Bernadine Dawn In May 1970, the Weather Underground issued a declaration of a state of war aimed at the US government. This marked the group's transition from political advocacy to violent action. The radical group followed a communist ideology and would eventually be responsible for the bombing of several New York police stations, the Pentagon, and the United States Capitol. By 1970, Bernadine Dawn was one of the group's leaders. She was placed on the FBI's most wanted list after the weathermen accidentally blew up a townhouse in New York's Greenwich Village that same year. Three members were killed in a townhouse explosion, a location where the group was manufacturing bombs. Dawn went into hiding but was taken off the list three years later after it emerged that the government had been illegally gathering information on members of the weather underground. Number 8 and 7 Catherine Ann Power and Susan Edith Sachs. In 1970, Catherine Ann Power was a senior at Brandeis University. She and then roommate Susan Edith Sachs were active protesters against the Vietnam War and other social constructs such as racism or sexism. When student-led protests were no longer enough for them, they decided to take a militant stand against the system. Sachs, Power, and three ex-convicted felons robbed a National Guard armory and a bank in Massachusetts. They stole weapons and 400 rounds of ammunition from the armory, then set fire to the facility. Three days later, they robbed a bank in Brighton. Power and Stanley Bond, one of the men that took part in the robberies, were romantically involved. They wanted to make away with enough money to provide firearms for the Black Panther movement. They managed to steal $26,000 in cash, but one of their accomplices shot and killed Walter Schroeder, the first responding police officer. The three men were apprehended shortly after the bank robbery, while Sachs and Power went on the run and were placed on the FBI's most wanted list. Sachs was arrested five years later in Philadelphia after a police officer recognized her from an FBI-issued photo. Power lived as Alice Louise Metzinger for 23 years. Outwardly, Metzinger was a loving wife and devoted mother. She worked as a cooking and nutrition teacher at a community college in Oregon, even though Power had been dropped from the FBI's most wanted list in 1993. She turned herself in. Number 6. Angela Yvonne Davis A heavily armed African-American high school student, Jonathan Jackson, took over a Marin County courtroom in 1970. He armed the African-American defendants and afterwards they took the judge, the prosecutor and three female jurors hostage. As they got out of the courtroom and into a getaway van, the police opened fire on the vehicle. Jackson, the two defendants from the courtroom and the judge were all killed in the exchange. 
the weapons used in the kidnap murder, including the shotgun used to kill the judge, had all been purchased by Angela Yvonne Davis two days before the incident. According to California law, this made the former philosophy professor an accomplice equally as guilty. A warrant was put out for her arrest. Davis became a fugitive and then FBI director J. Edgar Hoover placed her on the FBI's most wanted list. When she was ultimately captured in 1971, President Nixon congratulated the FBI for the apprehension of a dangerous terrorist. A nationwide movement for her release was organized and supported by prominent artists such as John Lennon and Yoko Ono. In 1972, Davis was acquitted of all charges. A jury concluded that even though she owned the guns used in the crime, it wasn't enough to suggest she had a direct responsibility in his planning and execution. In the years that followed, Davis became a well-known prisoner's rights advocate, political activist, and an influential scholar. Number 5. Ruth Eisman Shire On December 17, 1968, Ruth Eisman Shire helped Gary Stephen Christ in the kidnapping of 20-year-old Barbara Jane Mackle. They took her from a motel room in Atlanta and buried her in a box about a foot and a half underground. The kidnappers supplied food, water, an air pump, and a battery-powered lamp inside the box. Mackle's father was a millionaire land developer in Florida with personal ties to President-elect Richard Nixon. The kidnappers were paid the ransom they'd asked for, $500,000 in $20 bills. In exchange, they told the authorities where they could find Mackle. She was rescued approximately 83 hours after she'd been buried and aside for dehydration, physically unharmed. Christ was arrested shortly after, but Eisman Shire managed to evade the authorities, becoming the first woman placed on the FBI's most wanted list. A few months later, she was captured after applying for a nurse position in Oklahoma, even though she'd used the alias Donna Sue Wills, a routine applicant fingerprint check gave her away. Number 4. Shanika Minor The argument started over loud music, only to end up in a tragic double homicide. Tamika Perry was pregnant and around five days from her due date when she was fatally shot by Shanika Minor. According to the FBI, when Perry told Minor to turn down the music, the latter brandished a firearm and challenged her to a fight. Minor's mother, who was also the victim's neighbor, intervened and managed to keep the peace. The following morning, however, Minor returned to the duplex and confronted Perry once again. She fatally shot the pregnant 23-year-old in the chest and fled the scene. After being placed on the FBI's most wanted list with a $100,000 reward, her time on the run was short-lived. Minor was apprehended on July the 1st, 2016 and subsequently sentenced to 30 years in prison. Number 3. Shantae L. Henderson Shantae L. Henderson was already suspected of being a hardened gangster even before she shot and killed 21-year-old DeAndre Parker outside a convenience store in Kansas City, Missouri. A suspected member of the city's infamous 12th Street gang, authorities believe that Henderson had been involved in as many as 50 gang-related shootings and possibly even five other murders. After she killed Parker in September 2006, Henderson kept a low profile but was arrested in her hometown of Kansas City on March 31, 2007, the very same day she'd been placed on the FBI's most wanted list. Number 2. Marie Dean Arrington After public defender Bob Pierce unsuccessfully defended both of Marie Dean Arrington's children, the woman sought revenge on him. When she couldn't find Pierce at his office, Arrington turned her attention on his secretary, 37-year-old Vivian Ritter. She took her hostage, shot her multiple times, then ran her over with her own car. At the time of the murder, 
Arrington was already on bail, pending sentencing for the manslaughter death of her husband. She was sent to prison in Marion County, Florida in 1968. The following year, she escaped, earning a spot on the FBI's most wanted list. Arrington was eventually captured in New Orleans, working as a waitress. She was initially given the death penalty, which was overruled by the Supreme Court after it was deemed unconstitutional. Arrington was instead sentenced to life in prison, where she amassed around 61 violations over the years for battery, inciting a riot, drug possession, weapon possession, and others. She died from heart complications aged 80 in the same prison that she'd escaped from 45 years before. Number 1. Brenda Delgado After dating for two years, Dallas dermatologist Ricardo Panagua and Brenda Delgado, a dental hygienist student, ended their relationship. Panagua then started seeing pediatric dentist Kendra Hatcher, which didn't sit well with Delgado. After learning that Panagua flew his new girlfriend to San Francisco to meet his parents, Delgado's jealousy hit boiling point. That's when she started to plan Hatcher's murder. Delgado reportedly hired hitman Christopher Love and getaway driver Crystal Cortez, to whom she'd promised drugs and money. In September 2015, Hatcher was found dead in the parking garage of her upscale Dallas apartment complex. Shortly after the body was discovered, Delgado spoke to FBI investigators, but then promptly fled the country. She spent six months on the run and was eventually placed on the FBI's most wanted list with a $100,000 reward. Two days later, she was apprehended in Mexico. According to her lawyer, he'd already negotiated her surrender to Texas police before she was placed on the list. The jilted lover, as Delgado came to be known, spent five months in a Mexican prison before being extradited to the US. Her accomplices were arrested and the trio was charged with capital murder. 